Hi, and welcome to another Red Hat whiteboarding video. I'm Jerry Becker, and I'm an engagement lead with the Open Innovation Labs team. And I'm Matt Sakani, an Agile coach with the Open Innovation Labs team as well. So, Jerry, I work with teams, and I coach them, and I, and I deliver with them again and again. And over time, retrospectives, they seem to fall flat. Uh, particularly when you get into that routine and the team doesn't necessarily explore into other kinds of formats of retrospectives. Things like start, stop, and continue or the speedboat retrospective. These are just two like very common themes in retrospectives. So I was wondering if you had something a bit more fun. Well, Matt, that's a great question. So retrospectives are a crucial part of a product team's constant improvement, which is the whole point of a retrospective. And sometimes if you run the same ones over and over again, things get a little stale, you start to lose some engagement, and then those insights that you need to drive productivity start to dwindle. And so what I like to do is uh, mix them up whenever I can. And one of my favorite ones to pull out of my pocket is one called the hero's journey. Have you heard of this? Ooh, uh, no, but please do tell me more. Sure. So once your team has performed a safety check, which is a pretty crucial part to um, a team's contribution because you want to make sure that everybody feels safe in contributing to the retrospective, then you and your teammates are ready to begin the hero's journey retrospective. That sound like a dungeon master there? That was pretty good. Cool. I'd have you as my DM. That's what I was going for. Okay, cool. Well, so in the hero's journey, you and your teammates are going to recount a journey that you just completed. So in this sense, a journey might be the work that you did last week, or it could be a sprint that you just finished. So once it's all completed, it might look a little something like this. Jerry, I'm not sure. Oh my goodness. I feel as if you just transported me into this retrospective. I, I see that we have heroes and an inventory and quests and treasures, but I don't know how they got there. Well, when your team is ready, you can fill this out in any order that you want. But for this purposes, let's just kind of go through it in storybook form. So the first thing that your team's going to do is identify the heroes. So who participated in this journey? Who were the main characters that were there throughout? Who were the supporting characters that maybe came in and out during the journey or supported from elsewhere for the party's success? Once that's done, your team can go and fill out your inventory section. Here, you'll, you'll identify what were the things that the team had at their disposal to help them in their journey. So what were some of the maybe activities that they ran, the tools, the technology, the practices that they ran in order to complete the journey? Then we get into the quests section. So what were some of the monsters that the team had to slay, or the obstacles to overcome, or the puzzles they had to solve as they went along their way? And then we get to my favorite section, which is the treasure section. So what happened at the end? What did they uncover? What did they earn? through their, their hard work. Maybe what were some accolades that the team wants to mention for their different party members that contributed? And overall, how did they succeed and who did what to contribute to that? Well, that's fascinating. Thank you for sharing how we can actually get all the information. I can really see how the journey actually goes for the, the week or the sprint that this team actually underwent. But Retrospectives, they always need you know, that mechanism for improvement, right? What, how does our team consistently and continuously improve? And, and I don't see that in these quadrants. How does that play in? Yeah, so that's a good insight because a lot of teams will stop here and they actually won't turn the conversation and the insights here into actionable changes for improvement for the next journey that they go on. And so what we like to do is either as we're discussing the stickies together as a group or at the end, dedicate time to filling out specific action items. So what we would do here is look at the insights that were shared. Um, let's consider the team liked the fact that they went to lunch together on Wednesday. They enjoyed that. So maybe an action item is, why don't we make that a weekly activity? Let's book lunch reservations each week. And then we can assign that to a particular party member or team member to make sure that that gets done every single week. You know, one of the quests that was uncovered was that, you know, there was an ATO process that was super long. So how are we going to solve that? Well, how can we turn that into an action? Well, maybe that means we're going to add a security person to the team for the next sprint or maybe going forward permanently. And we'll make sure that that gets assigned to somebody too to ensure that it's completed. Well, Jerry, this is fascinating. And I love this new retrospective format that I can bring back to my teams. But that's just one other type of format. And you know, there's so many out there. So if I wanted to learn more about retrospectives or other formats that exist out there, where could I find those? 
So if you want to learn more about this retrospective, you can go to openpracticelibrary.com where you can find this and other retrospectives, as well as a wealth of other practices that we use in open innovation labs to work with teams and turn them into high performing teams. You can also visit red.ht slash labs if you want to learn more about open innovation labs. Thanks for watching. Keep questing.